It seems at times this load of mine is so hard to bear. The heavy weight of hurting day seem more than my share. So I find a place and seek his face. He helps me to see the great or small through it all Jesus cares for me Jesus cares for me that's all I need to know he walks with me day by day wherever I may go though others turn their backs on me Let me see, though all may fail, he never will, Jesus cares for me. Second book of Corinthians, third chapter. Happy New Year. Are you ready? You better be. <laughs> You're into it already. You're into the New Year already. We had 45 uh, seats taken from church this morning. We had our communion we took. And we had... How many cups left? Two cups left. Two cups left after it was all done. Yeah, we had some coming in, Jim, and, and getting them afterwards there. And uh, so I, my goodness, isn't that wonderful? And uh, so it's, the Lord is, is doing things. We had 52 the weekend of uh, Christmas. And uh, when we had the kids club out here, we had 165, 170 kids out there that weekend. Of course, the, we did all kinds of things that day. Uh, Ralph really had a good time that day, didn't you, Ralph? Hallelujah. Uh, that was really good. I, I was looking at the pictures of that the other night. And uh, when we did the uh, uh, gift giveaway and the clothing giveaway that we did, we had coats. And we uh, gave to some 40 kids um, coats and shoes. And, and I lost, I couldn't find the pictures. Sister Norma, did you have any pictures taken of that when we had all the presents piled up back there? Okay, because I took them with the camera and somehow I've lost the tape. And that, I thought that was very important for us. And uh, I just, I don't know what happened to it. It just disappeared. But the scripture teaches us that we are known by our fruit. And this morning as we ministered, we were talking about a man for all seasons. And all that Christ is. And how that we should wax strong. And walk in the grace of the Lord. And grow in the grace of the Lord. And find favor with God and with man to accomplish his work. And how we should move on throughout this year to be better. To find ourselves on a higher plane come the next year. To find ourselves in... In the company of more people. People that we have won unto the Lord. People that we've made a difference within, our, within their lives. The, I was thinking and I said, I'm always wanting more souls to be saved. I'm wanting lives to be changed. And as I was studying 3 o'clock yesterday morning, um, I, I got up and for a little while went back to bed and tried to sleep, but I couldn't. So I got up at 4 and began to study and to read. And, and I found in chapter 3 what I was looking for. And I made a little note above it there, chapter 3. I just wrote down, known by the fruit. Known by the fruit. Beginning in verse 1 there of chapter 3 in Second Corinthians, it says, 
Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some other epistles of commendation to you? Or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust we have through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. And as I was looking through that, I was evaluating the ministry that God has appointed Linda and I to. She doesn't know this. I haven't discussed this with her. But I don't discuss all things with her until sometimes I get up here and give her a little surprise, you know. And uh, it's hard to do. I, usually she's three steps ahead of me. Uh, but as I was, I was wondering, I said, Lord, I need an evaluation point of our ministry. How, how are we effective? How do we gauge our effectiveness? Because we have so many people come through our church. So many people come through over a period of months and years and just keep going. They'll come and stay a week or two and then they'll go on and they'll come and stay a week or two and go on and some settle and, and some don't. Some never settle. Some just fly from nest to nest to nest to nest to nest. And so I said, Lord, how do I gauge our effectiveness. How do I gauge our ministry? And he began to speak to me by the Spirit. And as I saw this, I could see that we gauge our ministries and our effectiveness by the grace and the Spirit of God as he changes the lives of people who are around us. As the lives of people are affected on a daily day basis, day-to-day -day basis and we see the frowns turn into smiles and we see the sarcasm turn into sweetness and we see the hard hearts turn into pliable hearts of flesh and we see hardness melted away and tenderness take its place and we see a desire to come to church rather than to stay home even when we're tired. We see a desire to reach out and to help others and to give of ourselves even though we don't have a lot to give. And I begin to realize that that is the point of measuring the effectiveness of the ministry. Because it's not what we have or how smart we are or what we've gained, but it's what we give of ourselves that matters. It's the, as the man said, um, I was just woke up from my nap and the man, Michael Yusoff, was ministering on TV. And as he said, you know, we lay up our treasures in heaven. I like his point. He was talking about taking it with you. Well, you know, you can't take it with you, but you can sure send it up ahead of you. Amen. I think that is the teaching of Christ. It says, sending up. You're, he made a statement that shocked me. You know, he said there's going to be some homeless people in heaven. Did that shock you, Brother Hampton? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> he said, some folks are just going to crawl and scratch and just barely make it in. I mean, he was making a point there. You know, some people just want to stay so close to the line that they're all, if they get tangled up in it, they're going to hang themselves. You know, you, you got to be careful. And I was telling Linda, I said, I don't want to live on that street. I want to live on the glory, glory of glory street. Over there where they've got the soul winner's crowns. And, 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 and the glory of, of God shining brightly. I want to be there. Don't you want to be there? You see, I want the, the light of the Lamb to light me completely. Now, I don't know if that might have been a slight exaggeration on his part. It doesn't matter. We got the point, right? The whole idea is measuring ourselves for progress. 
What have I accomplished? What did I accomplish with someone else? You see, it's always good to evaluate ourselves, but sometimes we evaluate ourselves within ourselves and by ourselves. We never really take the time to evaluate ourselves as to what we added to someone else's life. Too many times we're so busy trying to get for ourselves. Just trying to get by. We get so tied up and just trying to make it to the next day. You've heard the testimony many, many times. Just pray that I'll hold on. Well, stop that. Hold on. Drive through. Press on. Get on past it. Get a hold of God. Don't try to hold on. March on. Try to, try to do the best you can for the glory of God. Try to reach out and do something that touches the life and effective, make an effective effort to change someone else's life. Give someone what you have received because if you don't give it away, you're not going to be able to keep it. The plain teaching is this. Jesus said a man who will gain his life must give his life. He must lay it down. But if a man tries to keep it, he's going to lose it. The teaching is we must give of ourselves. And when we give of ourselves, we cause a smile. We cause a glitter in the eye. We cause a heart to swell within itself because of the goodness that is given. We cause a, a feeling of, of, of good pride, a feeling of happiness and of joy that somebody cares about me. And that changes the lives of people. Some folks rock along and they never make a commitment. They, they worry about, well, I don't want to be responsible. Well, let me tell you, dear. You're going to be responsible whether you make a commitment or not. You still have to answer for the responsibility of bearing the cross that Christ has given you. No matter where you are, no matter where you go, you still have to bear that responsibility. And one of these days you're going to stand before Christ our Lord and King and He's going to say, let's see here. And you're going to say, that's your responsibility, not mine. That's your deal, not mine. So what are you going to say? Are you going to say, God, I got so much joy out of helping so-and-so. I got so much joy out of blessing so-and-so. I got so much joy out of just hugging and, and caressing and, and loving and, and praying with them. And I got so much happiness out of just helping here and helping there. And so many people sit back and say, I don't have anything to give. <laughs> Wake up. Smell the coffee. How many of you don't cook coffee in the morning? Well, I do. <laughs> I got to have a cup of coffee in the morning, you know. If I couldn't have coffee or tea, I'd have a cup of hot water. I'd, I'd have to have something warm in the morning. Everybody has something they can give. Giving yourself and your heart and your feelings is much more important than giving your bucks. But your bucks come next. You've got to give them. Sorry, you've got to give them. I've learned something. Give until it hurts and then give some more. God will not allow you to outgive him. He will not do it. God will bless your life as you plant seed that is planted in healthy ground and, and fertile soil. I didn't say plug it down a rat hole. You can do that too and it'll go nowhere. You got to use your head, be wise as a serpent, yet harmless as a dove. Measure what you've done. Measure where you've gone. Measure what you've accomplished. Just what has come about because of your life this last year. What has come about because of your life? Have you changed the world that you live in any at all? Why am I always harping on this? This is my thing. I've got to change the world. I've got to make something, make an effort to account for something. I've wasted too much time. 
I've got to make a mark. Not for me, but for the merciful God that restored me. The merciful God that died upon Calvary for me. The merciful God that poured out His blood regardless of the circumstances and the situations of life. He said, I'm more than enough for you. Though I cry tears and my heart breaks and my body aches and sometimes is racked with the pain of this life, my God still says, I'm more than enough for you. Come to me and I will be all that you need. How can we not put ourselves out to glorify His name to a greater degree? In verse 6 he says, Who also, also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. You are an able minister. Paul said he was an able minister. Timothy was an able minister. Apollos was an able minister. Any place where the Holy Ghost resides becomes an able minister and ministry for the Lord God. You may not be on TV. You may not be in the radio. You may not be preaching. You may not be teaching. But you are an able minister to make a difference in the lives of people. You need to get up, get out of your house, and don't just go to Walmart. Oh, well, it works in Walmart. Well, you can stop by and see her now and then, but, I mean, sometimes you need to go to Target. I mean, I'm not telling you where to spend your money. I'm telling you to spread yourself around. You ought to be surprised at the people that I meet in Save Mart in town and country. You see, I don't just go to one grocery store. I go to them all because you people all shop in different ones. So I have to go to different grocery stores to meet you. Am I making any kind of a point that makes any sense here tonight? You see, we've got to get out and we've got to touch some lives, but we can't just keep going and doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and expect something different to come out of it. I don't care how many times you add it, two and two is still always going to be one. Four. <laughs> same on this hand. Still four. Every time you add it up, it's going to be four. So if you do the same thing every single time, you're going to get the same result every time. So if you're not happy with the result that you've been getting, guess what you've got to do? Duh! We've got to change it. We've got to go home a different way tonight. We've got to change it. Don't stop at the foster freeze the same time every... Aha, I got you. <laughs> at the same time every week. Where do I... Go to Sonic. <laughs> Go to... Make a change. Do something different. You are an able minister. Why walk in a rut? Why have your attitude to the place where you're so bored and you're so sick that all the time, I know what that preacher's going to preach tonight. You don't ever know what this boy's going to preach. I'll pull something out of the hat every time. I'll fool you. You'll be laughing. You'll be crying. You'll be doing... You'll be living and you'll be just enjoying yourself and then sometimes you'll get a little hot under the collar. That's okay. That's a part of life. Take it in stride. Get out of the rut. I, I personally believe this can be the best year that...
lived and in our entire lives. I'm another year older. You're another year older. That means we're another year wiser. We've faced some hardships. We've lost some things and we've gained some things. But I'm telling you something. We can make a difference. Everything we've lost, we've gained wisdom from that. I like it. When we lose something, God always gives us something better when we're faithful to Him. Who's going to climb and stand on His holy hill? Only those who are of a pure heart and who have clean hands. Let us clean our hands and our hearts before Him and let us truly become able ministers that rightly divide and live the Word of God this coming year to do the things that we need to do. Whether it is the simple thing of raking somebody's leaves or helping them build their porch or helping them stop a leak in their roof or, or fix their plumbing or, 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 or just anything along that line. If baking a pie for somebody or a cake for somebody or a card for somebody or a, or a little bit of flowers for someone or sometimes just a plain and simple old phone call that says, how you do it? I'm thinking about you. Sometimes I call some of you folks up and I just tell you, hey, I'm just thinking about you and I just wanted to tell you that I was thinking about you. Some of you have received those phone calls. And I tell you when I'm praying for you, when God brings you before me, that's all a part of this whole thing. Does that make you feel a little good? Freely you have received. And Jesus said, freely give. Are you going to be vulnerable and are you going to get hurt? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. It's, it's not going to always be easy and it's not always going to be right and you're going to get your feelings hurt. Somebody's going to step on your toes, shake it off, grow up, love Jesus, love your brothers and sisters. Flesh and blood is not your enemy. Sometimes we're foolish. Sometimes we say things out of turn, not meaning a thing. Sometimes we react in ways not meaning a thing. But I'm telling you, when God's people get their eyes and their minds off of these things and their ears to be close to those things, they're going to begin to look at things in a different way. And we're going to see our Heavenly Father. We're going to see our Lord Jesus high and lifted up as His train fills the temple, as His light shines and gives glittering power through all of glory, down into the very home and down into the very body that your spirit lives in. As He shines brightly, the Scripture says that you're going to be like a well-watered garden. Glory to God. You're going to produce good fruit. When we get our minds upon the Lord because we can do nothing without him he is the author and the finisher the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end there is nothing beside him upon him do all things depend nothing that was made was made without him he made everything out of nothing and everything consists of him Oh, that we can get our minds totally upon Him this year and that we can make a difference wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Make a difference that moment. Give somebody a smile. Luella, there's nothing like getting into a line when the, when the checker is there and they smile at you. I, 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 I hate to get in and you, you always do. We always see you. I don't know if you're smiling at us or laughing at us, but we see I'm kidding there. How many of you like to get into a checker's line and you see him? How many of you have ever done that before? You're saying to yourself, oh, God, help me. I hope I've got the right change. Is everything marked? You know, you expect him to pull out a bayonet, you know, just... <laughs> giving of ourselves and uh, no matter what it is what little we have if we give it as unto the Lord we are ably ministering that which the Holy Spirit has placed within us to give someone that grace that mercy that love that admonition of of the goodness that God 
has placed within us. You see, we've got to get beyond the regulation because the regulation is what kills. We've got to get beyond the, um, the idea of you must do this. You've got to live by this law. We've got to get beyond that. The very next line says that the letter kills. You see, when you get that thing in your mind that you've got to do it this way, you have to do it, you, oh, you just, you know, you can't break this law. You see, that's not what God wants. God doesn't want that kind of sacrifice. God wants the willing, the cheerful sacrifice of the heart. He wants you to give because you want to give. He wants you, remember the, as we were teaching on the, on the TV ministry, we said love does not demand a change, but it wants to give you a reason to change. To give you an opportunity to change. Love doesn't change anything of itself. But it gives a desire for change to come. And as you saturate yourself in the love of God, He's going to give you a desire to do those kinds of things that I'm talking about this very night. Skipping down to verse 17. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as the Spirit of the Lord. I have a little note written just below this. And I had done all of the studying and the cross-referencing out of 2 Corinthians 3 to Isaiah, also into Romans and Galatians and to Exodus to check out these verses of Scripture. And you might do the same. I'm not going to take the time to go into the depths of all of this teaching tonight because it is so, so involved. I, I simply made a note here at the bottom that says, this ministry demands truth and separation. This ministry demands truth and separation. My tape job is coming apart here, and so I'll get rid of my coat. <clears throat> Without truth and separations, from the worldly elements that drag us down and cause us to change in detrimental ways to our lives, we're never going to accomplish the good things that we want to accomplish. What would you like to see for your children this year? What would you like to see for your life this year? What do you want to find happening? Well, I'm telling you, this this evening as you apply yourself to the ability, to the responsibility, to the faithfulness, to the obedience that Christ has called you to, whether it be giving out of your pocketbook. Listen, we know what the word says. The word says tithe. Ten percent. I was trying to get my wallet out, but I think I've gotten too fat. Not the wallet, I mean me. You know. We need to get this thing saved this year. And you need to give your tithe. The Bible tells us that this is what we should do. And we need to give in the offerings. If you haven't been doing that, then you've been robbing God. And you need to make that right. And if you have been, God bless you. His favor is upon you. And you continue to do so. You need to get your attitude saved. And bring about a desire within yourself to want to be where the Spirit is flowing. Not only to watch, but to participate. You know, it's, it's a sad individual who only goes swimming to sit on the bank. And to watch everybody else play in the water. It's a sad individual who goes fishing. Only to take his pole and set it down beside him and to just watch everybody else cast out. It's a sad individual that takes time to go somewhere, time and time again, just to sit and watch. No, God doesn't call us just to sit and watch. God calls us to get involved. 
And I'll, I'll tell you this. Get somewhere where you can get involved to the best of your ability. Where your limits are. You know what your limits are. Some of you can do some. Some of you can't stand over 10 or 15 minutes. But you can smile real big. Uh, I mean, you understand exactly what I'm saying. There are limits and limitations in our lives. And I know that some of you are, are older than me. Not much, but some. And, 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 and you can't do some of the things physically that I can do. But still there are things that you can do. Can everybody say amen? amen. Find that, that little niche this year. Find that thing this year. And begin to apply that yourself to it. And you'll make the change in your life that you want. And you'll see the change in your children's life. I promise you. If you will obediently and steadfastly make those changes. You'll see the children that you so deeply love begin to change. I promise you. It will work. As you begin to allow things to transpire within your life, you separate yourself and to walk in the completeness of the truth that God has revealed to you. You can't walk in truth that God hasn't revealed to you, can you? But if you know to do good and you do it not, to you it is sin and you must answer for that situation. 19,000, or I, I said this this morning, 19,225, 205, I don't know why I said 19,000, but the year 2005 can be better than we've ever had in our entire lives. We are so much closer to Jesus Christ coming back. There is power and there, in, there is grace abundant, abundantly offered unto us. Yes, there is sin and there's problems, but the scripture plainly tells us where sin abounds, Grace that much more abounds. We can have what we so desire in the Lord. I want to see a flourishing, powerful ministry that reaches out not only through California, but through the western states and half the United States. I'm getting greedy, Brother Ralph. Brother Ralph, we were riding in the van the other night, and you know what he said? He started prophesying to Linda and me, and he said, boy, I can see you. He, he wasn't truly prophesying. He was just talking. But he said, I can see you preaching in China. I said, whoa, Brother Ralph, don't say that. You scare me. And I told him how much money I needed. And he said, it's in the bank. I said, I didn't see that one. You see, we, we're quick to agree to those things we want to do, aren't we? I want to see a flourishing, abundant ministry. But you see, it can't be done by one person. It can't be done by two people. And that's what the body of Christ, as it grows together, it, it grows together as every joint supplies that which it has to supply. That causes a firmness. That body gets like this, and it's a fist that can knock anything down. Oh, let God bless your life. Let him strengthen you today. Be united one to another and be united in Christ. In his love and in his power. In the admonition of his grace. In the fullness of his spirit. That we may pull down the strongholds. That we may set aside that sin that does so easily beset us. And that we may conquer by the love and the power of God that flows within us. As we yield ourselves to him. And he lights our paths, telling us that our light is going to shine ever increasing. Like the noonday, it's going to grow brighter and brighter. We're going to see clearly and we're going to accomplish more for the glory of God. Oh, I challenge you folks to set yourself to the miracles. Set yourself to the grace, to the power. And I'm not saying this just for the church. I'm saying this for your family. I'm saying this for your loved ones. I'm saying this for the friends and those who you contact on a day-to-day -day basis. Just let them see Jesus in you. If they can see Jesus in you, they're going to want to see. They're going to want to experience the change and the peace and the power that makes you more than an overcomer who every situation that life can throw at you. Receive tonight of that grace and of that power that clothes that person who sets themselves apart in the grace and love and the blood of Jesus Christ. Would you stand?